All right, so in this video, we're checking out the Tiny Pusher from Full Speed RC. This is a basically a power whip that's been inverted. And it's, in, this, in this particular instance, it's carrying an Insta360 Go mount here. And I did fly with the Insta360 Go. You'll see that footage later in the video. Uh, you can also um, get the GoPro light mount. So they have their um, nameless RC cases. Uh, I'll just show you. They sent them along as well. And I'll show this in a separate video. Um, this case is for the... I think this one here is for the uh, Hero 6 and 7. And then this one here is for the Hero 8. And it looks like they include the mounts as... Uh, yeah, the mounts for the, the light cases as well. It looks like those are included in here. And then uh, they sent along the... Uh, BEC modules for the GoPro uh, 6, 7 here, and then this one's for the 8. So this will be in a different video, otherwise this video will be way too long. Um, but yeah, you can also fly this with a GoPro light on as well. I was a little worried that this wouldn't be able to carry that, but I think it shouldn't have any problem. I flew this with a 3S450 milliamp hour outline battery. It could probably even go a little bigger. This, this battery with the Insta360 Go. I imagine uh, if you swap this out for the GoPro Lite, it should be totally fine as well. Um, very tiny, very light setup here. Uh, these 1103 8000 kV motors have been around a while. They, this has been on a lot of different drones from Full Speed RC. You got the 1635 Gem uh, Fan 3 bladed props, and then they're using their Nano Stack 16 by 16 stack here. I think it's a 12 amp 409 ESC and F4 flight controller, and then they have their Nano 400 uh, VTX here in the back, so 25 to 400 milliwatt video transmitter. Of course, this is all analog. We got your Cadex EOS 2 uh, micro camera there, or nano camera. Um, this is totally, again, totally analog. There is no digital version of this size. Uh, there is also a two and a half inch version called the Mini Pusher from Full Speed RC. I also have that as well. That'll be coming out in a um, future video, so make sure you're subscribed if you don't want to miss that one. If you're looking for something a little bit bigger to carry a little more load, I think that frame will also will, um, is also coming in an analog and digital version. I think they sent me the analog version of that one. Actually, I haven't opened the box yet up, and um, I'm pretty sure that other bigger one can carry the Cadex Vista if you want to have a cinema with the DJI system on instead of this one. So this does come in uh, multiple versions. Uh, mine was a plug and play version. And if you download the manual, it will have instructions on uh, how to install various common receivers like uh, RXSR, Crossfire, etc. I just happen to have this little tiny D16 receiver here. This is from Crossover RC, I think, Crossover RC, I believe. And just a single antenna. This is something I'm sitting around um, not the best range in this one, but if you're not flying too far away for something like this with very limited battery life, that uh, should be fine. And really the only places to stick it are here on the side. And I have zip tied to the carbon carbon little frame here. You can do it on this side or over here. But then if you don't put it on this side, the USB port might get blocked. So that's why I put it over on this side. And then the, uh, the wiring diagram is uh, outlined pretty well on the manual. So the link to the manual is actually on the product page. So the links to the product pages are down in the description. And additionally, if you're wondering where to get this mount here, uh, this is also available on Thingiverse. This is not included. So if you have to print one yourself, uh, the link to the Thingiverse file for this is also in the manual. And that is gonna be linked down in the description. The, the manual is linked on the product page. So Go down to the uh, video description if you want to get the link to the product page to get the uh, manual as well as the link to the Thingiverse file. All right, so this is how much it weighs with the Insta360 Go mount and no battery. So it's coming in at 44 and a half grams. I believe without this mount, they're listing it as 40 grams, which I think is about right. If you take this little mount off, it's probably about four grams. And we'll put on the Insta360 Go here. And we're coming in at 63 grams. And then the 450 3S. 
And that's going to bring us up to 104.3 grams. So yeah, I don't think this has any issue with carrying the weight on the 3S battery. I would recommend that uh, you probably don't want to go below 450 milliamp hours. You could probably go a little bit higher, maybe 550 and still get pretty good flight times. I think after you get more than that, your flight times are probably going to go down and, you know, point of diminishing returns. And then like something like it was 350 and it was not, um, the flights were not that long, like maybe two minutes. Uh, they were much longer on the on this particular 450. If you try other 450s, I bet the flight times will be similar. But this one seemed to have a pretty long flight time, at least on this particular model. So overall, I just flew it on the pit tune that came out of the box, and I didn't make any pit tune changes. So if you're wondering what my pids are, they are just whatever came from the factory. I didn't even look at them. I just bound up my receiver, installed the receiver, put in my um, uh, modes for my transmitter, and pretty much it just when the fluid and, and again you get more flight time on the 450 overall I don't think I would change a whole lot I mean the the way the ESCs are here on the bottom they're totally exposed and you probably would probably want to stick a piece of foam or something on here in case you land on something sharp like a rock for example you may knock one of these little capacitors off something like that so this is not ideal I didn't modify this because they wanted to show you how it came from the factory. Uh, but I, I think um, I'm going to probably keep this and I'm going to probably put a piece of foam right here. Just do, stick some VHB here and a piece of foam that covers up this. That should be fine. Um, otherwise, it's just going to land on the prop guards like this. It is recessed there, so it isn't going to land exactly on the um, UC board. But um, if it's anything sharp or anything, then it could uh knock something off it's like a rock or something that's definitely something is needed here you know, i think minimally like a piece of foam would be fine also you may want to uh put some conformal coating on here in case you happen to land in some wet grass something like that that would be pretty useful so i'm probably going to do that as well or you can come up with some sort of 3d printed part and then with the screw holes here you could just place this on top of the uh, esc and then screw it down with the four screws that'll hold it in place so all those things I would probably uh, make in terms of modifications. Other than that, not much else I would change. Um, I'm going to try and uh, work on the GoPro light setup for a future video. Um, in case if you guys are wondering and asking about that performance, uh, let me know down in the comments how interested you are in that. And I'll take that into consideration in terms of when to bring up the next video with the GoPro light on this. Anyway, that's going to do it for this video. Here's the flight footage. Let me know if you have any questions, and I'll talk to you guys in the next video. So the tune on this sounds pretty decent. I don't hear anything weird going on. Carrying a uh, 3S450 from Outline. Um, I think you'll have better flight times with the 450. I, I flew this before on a 350 and the flight times weren't very good. And it doesn't seem to have any trouble carrying the weight. As you can see today, there's no wind. Interesting, they retaped this area. I think there were some people using the park. And they put the swing sets way up high. But I feel like it's got pretty good control. Again, no wind. I don't recommend flying this in any kind of windy conditions. It'll just get blown around. Oh, now we have a little bit of wind, which ought to make things a bit interesting. Yeah, 
getting pushed around a little bit. And yeah, it makes these smaller gaps a bit tricky to get through. Yeah, the flight time's much better on the 450. I would have had to land by now on the 350. I was a bit concerned about the weight. Maybe the 450 might be too heavy, but nah, it's not a problem at all. And the analog video is actually pretty decent on this one. Ah, oh, there's that wind. Gotta stay low. You can kind of hear the uh, drone props react to the wind there. I'm not sure if that no those noises are going to come out on video or not, but I can hear it. Oh, here's that wind again. Not bad. Actually, uh, I'm doing better than I thought I would with a little bit of, little bit of a breeze. It's definitely better for indoor spaces, for sure. This is going to be killer for uh, indoor whip tracks. Three and a half minutes. Yeah, I definitely recommend this uh, Outline 3S450. Definitely uh, pretty good flight time. Close to four minutes already and still plenty of battery left. Anyway, I'm going to land it here about 10 and a half volts per cell. Let me know what you guys think. Four minutes of flight time and the Insta360 Go has a five minute limit. I think I'm getting close to that right now. So I'm going to go ahead and land it. I'll talk to you guys in the next one.